Baby Bolex. Baby Bolex. Baby Bolex. Baby Bolex. Today we're talking about what I call the Baby Bolex. This is called the Bolex C8 camera. C8. C8. This camera was uh, available from 1954 to 1958. Stay tuned to the end. I'm going to go over some fun, you know, some fun facts that most people are not interested in. I'll save till the end. The cult of Bolex is so strong. People may be offended, John. If I'm like, oh, baby Bolex. People may be offended, John. If I'm like, oh, baby Bolex. Ba this is the baby Bolex. People may be offended, John. So I say it's the baby Bolex because there was the standard Bolex. This is the Bolex H8, also an eight millimeter camera. And this is, well, come on, man. This is the baby Bolex. Uh, call it mini meat Bolex. Let's have a quick crash course of how to use this camera. Okay, right here is a knob, and this particular knob, 12.5, 36, 25, you may believe, what is this? So this alters your eyepiece depending what lens you have on your camera. So we have the standard 12.5 millimeter lens, which is considered the standard lens, and this is set at 12.5, which is great because this camera, by the way, this camera was donated to the FPP. In my opinion, it barely works. And this knob is not turnable. I have to get, I'd have to get some pliers to like turn this knob. So I'm not going to mess with that. Here we go, right here. Great frames per second. How many frames per second are running through your camera? 16. It's highlighted in orange because 16 frames per second is the standard. And this particular camera, awesome, gives you a little chart telling you what your shutter speed is right there. 16 frames per second gives you one 35th of a second shutter speed. That's stand, That's 16 frames per second. That doesn't change. And that number, one 35th, is, you know, if you're using a light meter app, you'll need to know what the shutter speed is. The only other data you need for your light meter app is what ISO film you're shooting. And I recommend ISO 40 film. Here's your winder. This, you wind your camera. There's no batteries in this camera whatsoever. And you could wind your camera till it stops. Here is your shutter button. I thought that the motor sounds rather weak. I have not run a full roll of film through this camera, but the motor sounds doesn't sound, doesn't sound too strong. Here's a little uh, lever here that if you want to lock your shutter so that doesn't accidentally get, you know, pushed if it's in your camera bag. Back of the camera. This is your footage counter, which is great. Here's your eyepiece. You're looking through a viewfinder, but it's not connected to your lens. So this is not this is not a reflex camera, so you're not actually looking through your lens. Tripod socket, great. Lens, 12.5 millimeter. This is the Sweetar lens, and for this particular lens, you do need to focus it, and you do need to set your f-stops. Right here, you can see the little line, so you know where, where to set. Widest f2.8, goes down to f22, that's great. Focusing, terrific. Uh, here is a useless chart on the front of your camera. No, seriously, because the ISO, you know, the, the, the sensitivity of film was so different in the 1950s. So um, I would just ignore this and use your light meter app, very important. From experience, generally speaking, I could say, if you have ISO 40 film, which is the norm, you simply go outside, set your lens in sunlight, Set your uh, f-stop to f22, and you're all set. Film compartment. Okay, this is pretty easy. This takes 25 feet of what's known as double eight film. Although double eight film is 16 millimeter in width, it is not 16 millimeter film because the perfing system is completely different. And it's called double eight because when you expose your film, it exposes one side of your film, making little eight millimeter images on one side, run the entire 25 feet through your camera, and then you will take that roll out, flip it, and then shoot it again, and the camera will put another set of eight millimeter images on your film. And then in the laboratory, your film actually physically slit to make an eight millimeter 50 feet of film or electronically slit to give you 50 feet of film and or about four minutes of runtime, about two minutes per side. This is just a test roll, a very small test roll. Film is light sensitive. So when you're handling film, handle it in dim light. And then once your film is in your camera, do not open this compartment until your, you know, your roll is complete. Then you will flip your film, shoot the other side, and then send your film, hopefully to the film photography project for developing and scanning. Dull side is light sensitive. 
the base side is usually shiny. You will always load your film so the dull part is facing out towards your lens. With this particular camera, it's pretty easy. Here is your uh, film gate, and that is called a pressure plate. Pressure. And that pressure plate keeps your film pressed up against the gate so you could, you know, expose your film. With the baby Bolex, you open up. Look at that. Ooh. You open up the pressure plate. Pressure. Take your take-up spool. I was lucky enough to have an actual authentic Bolex take-up spool. Put it on here. Nice. Now you will take your film, sandwich your film in between the film gate and the pressure plate. Pressure. Put your film on its post. Terrific. Don't worry about that it's because it's a test roll. Make sure your film is properly seated in between your pressure plate and your gate. Close the gate. Now you could test your film by pressing the shutter. Great, close your door. Now you will shoot side one. This particular Bolex, as I mentioned, was donated to the FPP, has not been tested. It's in, uh, I would think, you know, rickety shape. The motor seems to be running okay. And you get about 30, 30 or 40 seconds per wind. We have received a few of these in our donation department. And I, this is the only one that almost works. The grease inside the camera over the years has, you know, hardened. So, you know, things are not fluid anymore. So the film has run out. Great. Now you will open up the gate. Take your film, which will not look like this. This is only like a little dinky roll, which is why it's made of what's known as a fat reel. You take your film, you flip it. You take what was your film feed and you flip it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dull side is facing your lens. You put your film in. Put your film on its post. Put your take-up spool on its post. Make sure your film is properly seated between the gate and the pressure plate. Pressure. Close your gate. Okay. Now so your side two is loaded, and now you will shoot side two. That's really it. That's how to load and shoot with the Bolex C8. It's very easy to use. Uh, before you purchase one on, let's say, ebay.com, send a note out to the seller saying, hey, <laughs> does it work? I'm not fully confident that, that a full roll of film, that the, that the motor has enough torque to actually pull the film through, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a shot. Now, some fun facts. Uh, you can go to bolexcollector.com to find out about, you know, your various cameras. Like, for example, did you know that Bolex C8 serial numbers are imprinted on the bottom by the tripod? I did not. 527... 267. Oh, 610000 to 6700000. So this camera was made in 1957. The Baby Volex. The Baby Volex. Other fun fact about this camera. This camera, this this is my sweetar lens that I put on here. I already own this lens. But this camera came with this What? Yes. What? Zoom lens, right? So you this mounts on your camera. This lens is not that uncommon. I've seen this lens on other 8mm cameras. It was sold separately. This lens was made by Chinon. What you do when you're using such a lens, and it comes with its own viewer, and it's reflex, so you're actually looking through the lens. So it's pretty cool, and you could focus from... A 10 millimeter all the way up to uh, 30 millimeter zoom, f 1.8 to f 22, which is terrific. It's still not completely mounted on the camera, which is perfectly fine because I'm taking it off in 30 seconds. Now, the reason I'm not too crazy about this is because in order to load your camera, you have to remove the lens. 
load your camera, put your lens back on, shoot side one, remove the lens, flip your film, put the lens back. No. <laughs> Maybe this is practical if you're shooting like, I don't know, sports or, or some kind of event. But for me, it just makes perfect sense to use the original Bolex Sweetar lens. But these are available on ebay.com if you have a hankering to uh, complicate your life. <laughs> I, I never saw this as a, as a practical accessory because any camera you use it with, it's blocking the door to actually open and change your film. You know what I'm saying there, John? Of course. It's not like, you know, a sick... It's inconvenience. Yeah. I guess it's all... Yeah, all in what, what your needs are if you need a zoom lens. These are two odd things I wanted to share. These zoom lenses for these little 8mm cameras are available. Uh, the C8 uh, Bolex. Uh, a lot of folks who use the FPP to develop and scan their film are shooting with this camera. That's really it. I'll do an additional video when I run a roll of film through to give you my opinion of it. comments please leave your comments down below and we'll uh, we'll see you soon we'll see you on the flip side